people always want to know the newest trends. Um, people always want to network with like-minded people, and most importantly, people don't have time for anything anymore. The art industry is different from every other industry because every time you have to try to push the price a little bit up to make the artist grow. Um, I mean, when I left college in the 1970s, um, it was the start of the change over. When I left college, the expectation was you did not finish your apprenticeship till you were 60. <laughs> and age 60, you became the next generation to take over, to become a Royal Commission, to become established. And then suddenly through the 80s, it all turned on its head and actually people expected to be great successful artists by the time they got to 23. And by the time of 25, they felt they were dead in the water and they hadn't succeeded. Um, so the whole industry has changed. I don't know anyone that wants... Once you get cash, you get money for what you have produced, you know it has value, people appreciate it. And it's a very important, I think, for artists. Running the business is as creative as creating the art. And when I looked at it from a different perspective, then things started to work. Certain people speak of art in sort of Darwinian terms, you know, like um, survival of the fittest sort of thing. Uh, the best artists will thrive, they will prosper, they will make it, uh, and the rest, well, they don't deserve it. I mean, I, there's some, an element of truth in that, I suppose, you know, humans have been making art since prehistoric times. But it does seem to me a little bit of a, a complacent attitude, a dangerous one, actually, and self-defeating, too. Um, for those of us who love art, which is basically the same, let's face it, as those of us who love life, surely we need to be doing all we can to support the next generation of artists coming through. Living in a very big city and quite sometimes being very stressed about things, so it's good to, to be out and think and read about things that are outside myself and, yeah, in a sense, bigger than us. Can you explain, Joanna, what your works are? How did you get to be an artist? Hello. Um, I think the main reason is because I, I love it. Like I couldn't imagine myself doing anything else. Like if I would go back to my beginner spirit or my childhood spirit, would it be the main reason? Just because I think what Ellie said, like photography makes her happy. This piece is called Opera this lady, she walked and looked at everything and at this piece, she spent a long time and afterwards she looks at me and said, said it's, it's really sad. I was like, yeah, that's, I am excited that you're getting a reaction. It's a good thing that art, that, I think that's what art needs to do. Art should make you sad, happy, depressed, make you think about something that otherwise you wouldn't think about. Of course I was born in Sierra Leone, so you know, I'm technically a migrant, but it's, yeah, it's a really strange feeling that you're always the outsider. For me, sorry, but I think it's like you can't study art, it's just you do it and that's all, and you don't speak, you just do it, and that's all. I think it's it's my passion. I think like if I like every morning I'm so exciting, Jennifer. Like I wake up and I like all my ideas went uh, when I sleep, and it's it's incredible. Like every morning I was thinking, okay, I have to do that. I I have to I I don't know dye my yarn or I have to uh, paint or it just like it's. It's in me, you know. So how do you exchange on that when you can't convert, basically? Well, I think Google Translate helps a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the iPad works. <laughs> you know, um, stay tuned for more exploration of uh, female identity. I think that's the road that I'm very interested and passionate about. And um, hopefully it will bring change and a future uh, for the next generation of female artists. I think the message that I want people to see is that um, everybody has a story worth telling and find some way, some avenue, some ability to let people know what to, that, that your story is important because it's important to someone who hears it, whether it's your grandchild that 
um, or maybe a, a student in your class, every story is important. I'd just say try and carve your own niche and don't be too swayed by what's fashionable at the minute, what's on trend at the minute, uh, and take, take as many risks as you, as you can you feel comfortable with. Those of the 18th century, that basically means artists away from everything. And then there are a whole new crew of people that are saying art is also part of well-being. Yeah. And, and I think you kind of, you're exploring that as well um, yeah. in a very interesting way. Yeah, sure. If you're using an old school process or any kind of physical process, then there should be that, that concept to, to take it into the sort of level. another yeah. level. And so we set up kind of a, a movement of people, basically, and artists, and um, there's different artists that are kind of working in a similar way or kind of thinking about exploring working in this way. And we really wanted to make a, an environment where, which was very supportive to artists, and we've work, been working with Marine with this as well, because as we can recognise, Marine is pretty supportive to artists. <laughs> Most people don't know what Freeze is or what Basel is, unless you're such a small world, such an elitist world. So the idea was, you know, we left it, no marketing, no PR, so most people are discovering that, the fuck is that? Then they go on their phone, can't find it, that's what they do, take a photo, take a selfie, then they call up their cousin, their brother, their sister, their mother, you know, so first night's five people, second night, 20 people, a third night's 150 people every night, just there, waiting for the shutter to open. Mm -hmm. And we all you know, just took it as our own, it was like awesome it. to see that. Yeah. Only in public schooling, you actually talk history of art, and actually in state school and you're not in primary and secondary, which is also what she's saying. And the reason being is because art for art's sake is seen as a luxury. Whereas if you relate back to art to reality, it would actually be seen and perceived for everyone. It's to join the other and to take to join the hand to the other. And now uh, my my future is behind me. I what I like is to give the to help the future of the others. Voilà. That's my idea. Thank you.